We talk fantasy, Godzilla Media's fantasy football podcast, November, December. It's one of my favorite episodes of the entire year because we're talking about playoffs. Playoffs? Or are, or are we, right, Jim? Do we, do we hit the sound bite? We'll get to that in a second. But first, let's tell you about the friends that make this podcast possible here at Godzilla Media and We Talk Fantasy, and that's Mohawk Honda. Inventory is in. The holiday season is officially here. What better thing to get under the tree or technically in your driveway. Then a new ride thanks to Mohawk Honda. The Kelly Blue Book offers going on right now. Or you can head over to Freeman's Bridge Road in Glenville, New York, and find a new ride. I know it from experience. I got the pilot sitting in my driveway. Shout out to Greg Johnson, Cam McKinnon, the entire crew there, helping people find the vehicles that help out their business, their lifestyle, their budget, all the things that are important to you. Mohawk Honda wants to help you. And the holiday season, as you mentioned, is officially here. Make sure to check them out on Facebook, social media, and more so you can find out more about their days of giving going on this holiday season. Join in as Mohawk Honda continues to support local initiatives here in the Capital Region and across upstate New York. Mohawk Honda, where they always go out of their way to please you. Now, guys, some of your fantasy football teams have been pleasing. Some of you, not so much. I think we have to rehash a topic off the front here. And that's the changes that have happened to fantasy football leagues. And Chet, I'm going to keep you second on this one because I feel like your answer is going to be a little bit longer because we've been following the, the, the journey that has been your multiple double-digit fantasy leagues. Kyle, I'm going to start with you on this one. Uh, how many leagues, if at all, are getting ready for this to be the final week of the regular season? Did you adjust? Where does your situation – oh, the big donut here on our visual nope. side. Nope, none of, us, none of us are starting this week or next week. we still got two more weeks of uh... – matchups before the playoffs start so um i do i do know of a couple leagues that I, i'm with uh i know about from through work friends and stuff like that that are starting neck not this is the final week and then they're starting next week so um yeah none of my leagues are actually actually moved it up at all is it too early to decide whether or not you have an opinion on if it's good or bad for the future i can give you another two weeks for you to answer that depending <laughs> on how your teams are playing <laughs> so I don't know. I, yeah. I would like to see how it plays out a little bit, I guess. Um, the only thing – do we have any – Is the, are there any teams on bye week 14? Yes. yes so, I, believe, I know that the Eagles are one of those teams. So that's so, a lot of Jalen Hurts. That's why, like, I, I don't see how it can work out well. If you have any buys during the playoffs, it's not fair. Like, it really isn't. If you – if let's say the Chiefs and the Bills were bye week 14. You just lost Allen, Mahomes, Hill, Diggs, Kelsey. Those are – First, first, second, third round picks. Um, and if your playoffs are that weak, I mean, I don't see how you can let that happen. So um, I'm happy that we didn't change it for that exact reason. But um, yeah, I, I, I would hate to have a have the playoffs start next week. Patriots, another team in that mix, depending on how well you've liked Mac Jones this season. They're another team, and there are a few others on by. Uh, Chet, to you, kind of take us through what the, the numbers are looking like for your multiple leagues this season, and if you've got an opinion yet of whether or not this is a good change for fantasy football's future. So, I kind of, it's fine, I just crunched the numbers on my 10 teams. Would you guys like to guess my overall record? Or should I, or should I save that for when we reach the playoffs? Should I, I, save say, I say save it. I, I okay. feel like, I'll, yeah, save it. I have an idea in my head. I'm going to write this down somewhere, too. I actually, I'm going to write down right now. Go ahead, Chet. Okay. Um, <laughs> So none of my leagues are starting playoffs yet. Actually, and I just got a little like nervous butterfly because I just realized that the Godzilla Media League playoffs start next week. So we're going to experience uh, teams on by when we start the quarterfinals. And I just realized that I locked up the number one seat. Yeah, shout out to Chet. How brutal is this though, guys? So I do lead the league in points. However... Um, going back through the standings, who is I'm, I can't remember saying this name on air. Touchdown, my pants. Who is uh, that? Matt Woods, uh, Matt host Woods. Of o- over the bar podcast. So I just defeated this week. Take that, Woodsy. How painful is this, boys? So I uh, have outscored Touchdown, my pants by only 50 points. I'm the number one scoring team. He is second highest, 50 points behind me. I'm 10 and two. He's five and seven. Oh, <laughs> that is brutal. <laughs> he has outscored the second place team by almost a hundo and has three less wins. And and how many teams are making it, guys? Is it eight teams are making eight, it? Eight out of the four. He is currently yeah. holding the eighth and final playoff spot, which, I mean, when you're not dealing with bye weeks, 
You just got to get into the dance. Oh my God, That's am right. I going to play him? It's possible. Oh no. <laughs> Which, how crazy is this though? So depending on what happens in this final week, and I'm not going to look at who's playing who in those kind of scenarios, but if he wins and some people lose, he could jump all the way up to the fifth seed because he's got those guys on the points. I'm assuming points four is the tiebreaker. Yes. Yeah. Wow. This is going to be a, a crazy final week. Um, not, I know you're the commish of this league, which I have a, a bone to pick with you about that as well. Ooh. I think you have to wait just because of what Kyle mentioned with bye weeks. Um, because you should know the, the rules of your league before you draft. And so I guess if you know that the playoffs are going to start in week 14, you really do have to consider that. Jalen Hurts in some ways becomes undraftable because, uh, yeah, he could carry you and maybe do well in the regular season. I know prior to this week he was QB1. But if you don't have him for your first playoff round and you're having to stream a guy or maybe you have to be smart enough to hold on to somebody, look at the matchups for the playoff round and make sure you have the best available waiver guy ahead of time, but that is really tough because you don't want – you want to be at full strength. You want everybody to have an even playing field. And so that kind of makes some certain players uh, undraftable or you, you maybe you trade them because you know you're – it becomes really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah, most of our leagues are starting in, I believe, week – when there's only four teams that make it, I've, I've noticed a lot of them are starting in week 16 is like the semifinals. We're going to be starting in week 15, right, Kyle, in Dynasty? Because we have six teams. It's a 12-team league. Six teams make it. Um, top two seeds get a bye. And so then you have your quarterfinals there. Um, but, yeah, it is still really exciting. And I, I really I feel like it hasn't changed a lot for me. I know for you guys in some of the leagues you have where it worked out really nicely where you play every team once, I could see how that becomes much more of an issue where it was so balanced and you really couldn't complain about seeing maybe the best team twice, and that's an unfair disadvantage. That is the only situation where I would look at it and be like, no, we're leaving it as is. You're going to have to deal with the buys. Our league works out perfect because that's a 14-team league, right? You yep. play 13 weeks of the regular season. That's perfect. You don't want to mess with that. Right. Um, only thing I could think about doing, and that would be kind of lame, is everybody has a buy. But I don't know how you could even do that in settings. You know, like, is that even possible? So uh, otherwise, I think you got to wait till the bye weeks are over and make sure your, your championship ends in now week 17 so two weeks before uh the finale my, yeah go ahead Kyle. yeah my my other favorite part about an extra week in some in, in all of my leagues i have an extra week to make the playoffs so those teams now if last week sure. you were four and four and seven mm -hmm. you have two more games you have a shot of getting to six and seven if knowing the competitive yep. nature of your league i mean last week i think i said on, on air in my in my other hometown league i had like a 13 percent chance to make the playoffs I upset the one seed this week, and now I'm at a 51% chance to make the playoffs. Because I and, and if this was the finale, that's still a coin flip. Exactly. So right. like I'm back alive again. So I love that that fact that it's a whole another opportunity for some of those lower yep. lower win teams. I've had that happen too in other leagues in previous years where you just you just run out of time yep. and it's really hard to dig yourself out of holes. And that extra week is huge where if you have, like Kyle said. You know, four and seven start. That's almost impossible to come back with, with a less extra week. The extra week keeps you in it, keeps you a little bit more interested. For those who are sitting in first place heading to this, what would be traditionally the final week, I can already hear the complaints coming. If this was a thirteen-week regular season, <laughs> I would have had a bye. Get ready. No matter what fantasy league you're in, that top <laughs> one to two seeds are going to complain, and that's okay. They get a year to complain about it. And, and really you know what? As the commish, you just forward that email to Roger Goodell. <laughs> to the big commish it's his fault for changing this format and we're just left picking up the pieces yes. Which of picking up the pieces can you believe in that godzilla need league back-to-back -back plays i lost dalvin cook and debo samuel unbelievable brutal absolutely brutal worst time for it to happen now and now that i realize that playoffs start next week i'm probably not gonna have either of those guys and i could be playing god i hope matt woods goes up higher in the seating i don't want to play that team let me guess. Does he have Jonathan Taylor? Uh, he does not. I believe – oh, I'm forgetting who has Jonathan Taylor. I want to say it's Ryan McCarthy from No Credentials Required. I know Ooh. Ryan Katie had Leonard Fournette last week, and I got those Ooh. two confused, those monster games they both had. What a dangerous team. I'm not looking at his roster. Woo! 
Lamar Jackson, Justin Jefferson, Mike Williams, Zeke, Connor, Gronkowski, and Evans. Yeah, that's a 14-team monster right there. That's a really, really good team. Great. Now I'm nervous. Now I'm going to be stressing. Thank God. <laughs> Next week, Kyle, as the observer, the omnipresent eyes that have been over the league. I want Kyle to make his predictions next week for the Godzilla Media Fantasy League. When we got the 18 field set, we're going to have Mr. Kyle Ray go through the bracket and pick the team and do that. Love so it. He'll, he'll set the odds of who he thinks is going to bring home the belt thanks to undisputed belts later in December. Uh, just go back to the po point you had there, Chet. Was the beef you had with me that we did not have the extra week? Was that the bone you had to pick with me? No, or is there something else? no. Okay, go ahead. this bone real quick. Okay. Because I sent it to our DM and you ignored it. Somehow, in the uh, second game window at about 7 o'clock, someone in the Godzilla Mead was able to drop Jeff Wilson, who was currently playing, and pick up somebody else. And it went through. I got the notification, had to do a double take. So I'm like, I just saw Jeff Wilson carry the ball. How is someone able to drop a locked player? And for whatever reason, the Godzilla League let it happen. And uh, I have never seen that before. Is it, I believe, I believe it actually was Matt Woods again here. Oh, I, son of a gun. Because he picked up DJ Dallas because he didn't have a running back in his slot. Now, I don't believe that I've ever seen that before either. Now, sometimes Yahoo's time things get a little stamped at the West Coast. So I was in that matchup. I know what you're exactly what you're talking about. I had Jeff Wilson on his bench and then yeah. DJ Dallas popped up. I'm like, what the hell? Where did, where did this come from? So I will check with Woods because you're exactly right. Usually when the game kicks off, you can't pick up anybody. I don't know if that was a Yahoo timestamp difference because I, that was my matchup. Thank God I won. And that would, I would and make that it play anymore. Sense. Is Matt Woods currently on the West Coast? No. Okay, never mind that. I was going to say maybe if, if he was on the West Coast and then so three hours difference would be four o'clock and would allow him to make that move. But for whatever reason, it showed up in our app, notified us at 7.02 which would be impossible. I don't know how he'd be able to circumvent that. But yeah, I was like, wait a second. That changes everything. <laughs> if I, if Yahoo or this league screwed me in that game, I would have led this podcast with that because <laughs> I was watching it because he had the empty slot. He just had one running back and nobody else underneath. So luckily he got away with it. And back to your point there too about like, if you were in a league this year that has 14 teams, what we did, and this could be something that if Roger Goodell doesn't make the change next year, hopefully he does and gets rid of these buys in week 14. I'd rather have a bunch of buys in week eight or week nine than this again next year. We did the challenge week. So after the draft, week two, rather than week one, week one, you kind of have the idea of who's going to play. Week two, there's still a variable of somebody getting injured. You got to pick whoever you wanted to play after the draft. So the champion got to pick whoever their opponent was week two for that extra game. So if you finish as the runner up, you got to look at everybody's team and say, I want that like team that. week two. So that was kind of the cool thing we did to balance that off. What, what did we do in, in Godzilla? Was just randomized? Uh, random draft order in the Godzilla Media League. Uh, by random, I mean the Hooters girls wonderfully picked our names and figured out what the order was. And then that's exactly right. We wanted to play everybody once. That was the most fair way to do it. And uh, we'll find out if next year we have to make the addition for the challenge week at Hooters. Right, right. Love it. So let's get into the Johnstone Supply in Troy mailbag. Some of you already have an idea that I am the 2022 draft, and we'll get to why that's important here in the mailbag. But first, I've got to tell you about Johnstone Supply in Troy. The holiday season, as we mentioned, like Mohawk Hunt and all our great sponsors, things are changing. Movement is happening across your family, friends, and more. Make sure to pick up the Goodman Furnace. Make that update of your hosting friends or family this holiday season. You want to make sure your place is safe and warm. You're not freezing in the snow. Goodman Furnace is made in the United States of America, dependable, efficient, and more. Make the change today. Head over to 6th Avenue, 518-272-5922. Call George, Tom, Kev, James. Talk to Tom and say, hey, is John Stone getting in the Godzilla Media playoffs? You're 5-7. and seven. Do you need a miracle? Can Derrick Henry just suit up for one game for you? Can you trade for Derrick Henry? 518-272-5922. John Stone Supply in Troy. Don't forget to update your air filters. Find out about your air purification systems that can help your home. If you have a nest that you rip the batteries out of the back and are wondering, when can I get this fixed, like me, Johnstone Supply in Troy has a nest for you as well. Check them out. Again, 6th Avenue, Facebook, and more. Johnstone Supply in Troy. All right, this one's coming from Connor for our mailbag. He immediately wrote this under our episode on Instagram the moment our last week's episode was taped. Guys, I need answers. 2022 draft. Who is the number one pick? He gave us options. Now, at this point last week, Christian McCaffrey was healthy. 
Delvin Cook was healthy. Jonathan Taylor was still Jonathan Taylor. And at this point now, a week later from Connor's question, um, Chad, I'll start with you. Is it a slam dunk? No doubt. Jonathan Taylor, 2022, number one overall pick. Ooh, hard to refute it, as it really is. Um, I feel like we've kind of not ignored how great some of these running backs have been on like a year to year. Like we'd always be like, Derrick Henry's the best. And then he'd never go as the number one guy. And we'd make the excuse for, well, CMC gets so many catches and, and Dalvin gets catches. Kamara, I think that's just the safest pick would be Jonathan Taylor because he's done nothing to make you second guess it yet. And so the guys that you mentioned all now have a risk tag attached to them. We've seen CMC go on IR back-to-back -back seasons. Derrick Henry is coming off of a significant injury. What's he going to look like? Um, the Saints offense is taking a huge step back with Kamara. So a lot of those guys that we've seen in the top four, Zeke is nowhere near the same guy anymore. Massive drop off. So those guys that we've seen in the top four consistently are all taking a step back. And Taylor has taken a massive leap. He's still a very young guy. No injury concerns so far. I think he might have missed a couple games as a rookie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did. Because that's when they brought in ooh, those. I mean, they, every guy that Mack in. and Hines and yeah, yeah. There was one other guy, Williams. Or no, 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 it's coming to me. Yeah, it'll come to me later. Jordan Wilkins. Ooh, there it is. Um, you know, random guys were coming in. And that's what makes me so optimistic about Taylor as a number one guy is that offensive line is so really good. Like they've been able to prove the last two seasons. Just about anybody you put back there is going to be productive. And Jonathan Taylor is a next level athlete who can have massive games. How many touchdowns in a row? How many games? Like eight or nine? Like it's becoming ridiculous how much of a slam dunk he is. He reminds me of Zeke three years ago, a guy who every single week was closing in on 100 scrimmage yards and a touchdown. You never had to worry about it. So at this point, I feel like we should just like tape this segment and remind ourselves, kind of like 50 first dates, where we all kind of forget how great Jonathan Taylor is right now. Let's just rewind this for ourselves in six months and be like, oh yeah, Jonathan Taylor was the best. He should be the best again next year. I've actually got somebody I'm really keeping an eye on, especially as they finish the year. Ooh, can, I, can I say, can I guess? Yeah. You're saying number one running back? It, I'm not. Najee Harris. No. Ooh. Why are we not talking about Joe Mixon? Ooh. That yeah. entire offense should only get better next year. You got another year healthy under, under uh, Joey. They they could draft more to the offensive line and make that make that line even more scary. I mean, for God's sakes, look mix in the last four games, 23, 25, 24, 30. Joe Mixon's not gonna catch Jonathan Taylor, but he's gonna finish the number two running back. Uh, I don't think he I think he's gonna catch up to Eckler and and take it away from him. But I I I still think I lean more towards Derrick Henry being my number one back next year. Um, you and I think it goes back to the point of, yeah, he had an injury, and you can you should never count on injuries. However, that's the reason I'm staying away from CMC next year, which is ironic. Um, but you can't refute what Derrick Henry did the first what six games at an, an unreal historic pace. Um, and then I think you go Jonathan Taylor, but then I also don't think Joe Mixon's getting enough credit after we literally all were like, nope, nope, not touching Joe Mixon with a with a ten foot pole. So. Um, I definitely think Joe Mixon sh has should get some respect and some conversation around who could be the number one running back next year. I think his team's going to be better um, than the Colts next year. Um, is he a better running back than Taylor? No, but a better team sometimes provides better opportunities. I feel like we, we love to talk about, I've mentioned this before, we always love to, to shit on teams when they're really bad and we don't acknowledge when they're good, like, especially with coaches. It happens a lot. Like we love to kick them when they're down. Cliff Kingsbury is a perfect example. I think I brought that up last year. We all trash it when he's hired. <laughs> We're now leading the NFC West, and he gets no love. It's, it, it always goes to the players. Sure. But I feel like that's the case with Cincinnati's offensive line. Like we just, They got absolutely eviscerated every week with how bad their play was. I haven't seen Joe Burrow get hit that much compared to what it was a year ago. Joe Mixon has become much more consistent in the running game, and we never talk about the offensive line. Like That was a really quick turnaround. And a lot of teams don't aren't able to pull that off. Like we always like we knew that that was a problem, and they were able to address it really quick. So yeah, he is a guy that 
it's going to get super interesting after like between picks three and six, like what are the guys you feel the most comfortable with coming off of those injuries? Who's going to be taking steps back? Who's jumping? I think Najee Harris should be in the conversation for top three. Give me the young legs of a guy who's a clear workhorse in an offense. Who knows what the quarterback situation is going to be, but I think he's just that next level running back who can turn nothing into something on every play. At this point, my top three would also be Henry, uh, Taylor, and Mixon. Now, today, that's the best part about this. we got a few more weeks left to go where somebody could, you know, get injured. Um, let's hope not. We've seen enough running back injuries. Yeah. But something could completely change that order. But I like that order as well because it's going to be the really interesting conversation this upcoming summer. And maybe it happens all the time. But in particular, this summer, it's going to be unique of numbers versus name brand. Like we just ran through a ton of players. We could add Zeke and Saquon and all these other guys where they've had big seasons. This can go to wide receivers of the past few years, whether it's Antonio Brown or Michael Thomas. Hell, Gronk's probably somewhere in this conversation of these are guys who have been proven fantasy commodities for years. Now, because of who they are in whatever draft you're in, there is somebody who's going to reach for them because they know their name. And they can give you a really good argument why they're a good pick. Now, is that going to be good enough for 2022 is the real question. That's why fantasy football next season, especially with the running back position, there's going to be some shoulder shrugs of McCaffrey keeps getting hurt. Barkley keeps getting hurt. Zeke's touches are going down because the Cowboys are doing bizarre. All these name brand people we know are falling off. And maybe we should already accept that because this is what fantasy football is. From Le'Veon Bell to David Johnson, we can run through this list of players that are like, Wait a second. He was just a top fantasy guy. Now he's out of the league three years later. This, this, it's maybe more common than I even realized. But at this moment, because Derrick Henry is the king and the stats were through the roof, I would still take him over Jonathan Taylor and Joe Mixon. Hell, uh, Eckler's been hurt. Saquon, you just heard the names. I would put Mixon three. I can't believe I'm saying that at this point. And we also, it's even more so that we've seen the injuries that have happened in the last month. How about Cam Akers? coming off a massive injury. J.K. Dobbins coming off a massive injury. This might be, like you said, guys, we still have a few weeks for to go before we start talking about the offseason. This might be the most wide open. Like There could be so much variation between what your top 10 looks like, what my top 10 looks like, of all positions. Maybe this is going to be the return of top wide receivers go early because we just don't know who the locks are at running back because it might not exist. I think there's like three or four guys that – maybe not even four – the three guys that we've kind of talked about that I feel really good. I thought it was me, dude. Holy moly. Well, Gaz just got abducted for anybody who's listening. Uh, aliens now have Gaz. Yep. It, it's bad. Oh, that, scared, that scared the bejesus out of me. Hey, he's bad. I was just abducted by the zero <laughs> running back method. I'm going to leave that in. Usually I edit that out, but I feel like the whole sci-fi feel of, oh, no, <laughs> shit, there's zero running backs. And then just me getting cut off, like as if I was tapped in by the, uh, I don't know, some type of situation of fantasy people do you guys know what i mean by that though like do you now feel less willing to draft running backs that are before in the preseason we talked about this theory of wide receiver wide receiver wide receiver and because i know running backs are going to get hurt i'll just get some backups and hope somebody gets hurt it's and then the other thing spots. about that that's been kind of crazy is we've seen injuries and not injuries at the wide receivers that were going in the top two rounds with calvin ridley missing most of this year uh aj brown going on IR DK Metcalf has fallen off. Like it's crazy how there's only been a handful of guys who have really lived up to where we drafted them. And so while I never root for injuries, I think this season has been one of the more interesting ones because you can't make the excuse this year of, I didn't have a top draft pick. Like those are the teams that are probably are really struggling and might be on the verge of missing their playoffs because they lost Derrick Henry. They lost CMC. 
And back to this point that I, I think I've said it multiple times this year, there's a reason why I thought Dalvin Cook deserved that number two slot is because of Alexander Madison. There are teams, myself included, who are not fully panicked about losing Dalvin, especially near playoff time, because we have the handcuff of Alexander Madison. That handcuff has not existed for Derrick Henry with the Adrian Peterson experiment. Is it Deonta Foreman? Is it Hilliard who had 100 plus yards? Good luck figuring out with any confidence who that guy is going to be. Chuba Hubbard, it's been okay. He's been pretty good as the backup for CMC. But we have to now look at that, and that's how I'm going to analyze next year's draft. Who do I feel really good about with a handcuff? Is that Naheem Hines for Jonathan Taylor? It might be. Who Joe Mixon, is that Samaj P. Ryan? Do I think he can be a handcuff that I'm not going to lose massive production if one of those guys go down? The Browns almost feel like they invented that, right? With Kareem Hunt and Chubb and ooh, of are we are we ooh, are we omitting Chubb? Should he be in the top four conversation? Because yeah, he he's dealt with weird stuff with it being COVID and minor injury this year. But I think the last thing I saw isn't he averaging like six yards a carry? Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's almost unheard of for an every down back. And then and then the Browns become the Browns and stop running the ball for some stupid ass reason. Right, right. <laughs> Dumbest franchise in the world. And obviously that's like one of the best handcuffs with Kareem Hunt. He's almost too good of a handcuff because he, you know, kind of steals things away from Chubb. And also another thing to add to this whole situation is that like we mentioned wide receivers. If you wanted to just pass on running backs, go to wide receivers. Cooper Cup's really good. Debo Samuel, Jamar Chase. But those guys are so young and maybe a little bit still improving. Maybe not so much Cup in comparison to the other two that if you're in a fantasy draft next year, you said, I'm taking Cooper Cup number one overall. Your, people's eyes are going to jump out of their heads and be like, What? Cooper Cup? I, I'm just not ready for that. I haven't accepted that pill of Cooper Cup being a number one pick in a fantasy draft. Well, how about, you know, for the last two years, the number one receiver off the board has likely been Devontae Adams. Well, we don't know who's going to be throwing him the football. That could be a much more wide open conversation of, I don't expect Devontae to stay, but it's really important to figure out who's going to be throwing you the football. Mm-hmm. So whether your playoffs start this week or in two weeks, the waiver wire is dangerous. Kyle and I were talking about before we hit the record button here. Of, this is danger. And you can see almost Kyle hiding on our visual side. The aliens might get him too if we talk too much about the waiver. This is the riskiest time ever to make it happen. You know, we were coming off this conversation about injuries because if you've got an injury and you blame somebody like Madison, if he's out there somehow or Chuba, if, if somehow he's out in the league for smaller leagues, okay, you go after the obvious ones like that and hope for a big bonus to hit. I'm in a situation in one league where I've got Kenny Galladay, who has done nothing all season, nothing. But his projections every single week are double digits. And a guy like a Russell Gange for the Falcons who, okay, Pitts isn't doing anything. Cordello Patterson is the one-man offense. Do you guys, besides Chuba and besides Madison, even touch anybody? You've gone 12 weeks with basically your team. And for one week, you're going to hope to hit it big at the casino, it feels like. Uh, Kyle, I'll start with you on this because usually you're the waiver guy. Do you even even consider it besides a huge injury diving for the risk into the waiver wire? No. I mean, there's one, but it's a quick two-weeker because of DeAndre Swift's injury. is only going to be keep him out a week or two. I think Jamal Williams is really the only viable option if he's out there still. But even then, when you look, people are talking about Boston Scott. Why? Like, congratulations, uh, Howard's out. Miles Sanders has been a little bit banged up, but that offense against the Giants looked bad. And um, I, you, don't, you don't know that. People are also looking at Matt Breida. No thanks. I'm not going to touch any Bills running back. Um, I think there's also uh, – who else was there? Kenny Galladay was on there. But, again, it's all these same things. It's like look at who they're playing for, what their position is. There's a reason why they're still on the waiver wire. Um, and, I, and I also talked about you, – you mentioned him a minute ago, Russell Gage. I mentioned him a couple weeks ago. He's in he's in the same house as shit nuts is. Get off the team. <laughs> Congratulations. You scored a touchdown this week. Good job. But now next week you're gonna throw up a complete zero because you're gonna completely disappear off the offense. So I think the only one that I would look at is Jamal Williams. And again, it's a quick flex play for a couple weeks, but then you're in this exact same boat. Um, if you're in my position where playoffs don't even start this week or next week. It's it's only a couple week injury. Um, unless they decide to shut DeAndre Swift down, which I don't see them doing. Um but he's really the only one that I could see on the waiver wire that I was that I would have any interest in grabbing anywhere. <laughs> you mentioned Jalen Hurts struggling. 
Can is there a way where we could drop a guy off of waivers and just like eliminate him from fantasy football? And I'm talking about Jalen Rager, that bomb of a receiver. You remember when it was it Nelson Aguilar got so much criticism for drops? What do we do about Jalen Rager? He should just be sent into oblivion in terms of fantasy football. I don't even want to see his freaking name come up on my God, that guy is who hey, not not only was it the one on fourth down that hit him in the freaking helmet. Two plays before he had one in the bread basket that went right through. Jalen Hurts made, made some horrible throws on Sunday, but he, I don't know if there's another guy in football whose wide receivers do less to help him than what, when Jalen Hurts. I because it's happened multiple times. Usually it's he completes it and there's a holding or there's a illegal hands to the face on a lineman or some stupid penalty. But God, did that guy make some amazing crunch time throws for nothing just because Jalen Rager. It's one of the worst busts of the last five years. <laughs> I, I even had Dockin Rager this year. I was excited to see what he was doing. I was like, nothing. Not absolutely a nothing. God. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I think Jamal Williams, you said it perfectly, Kyle. I think he's a short term solution if you need a flex play. That offense is really bad. It's really, really bad. And that could work in Jamal's favor because Goff doesn't even look downfield. Like, it's he looks to dump it off as a first option. And, and we saw that on Thanksgiving with Jamal getting some catches that should have went to DeAndre Swift if he hadn't gone down. Uh, the only thing I worry about is, you know, we've seen, I think his name's Jamar Jefferson. Um, I think he's the backup. He's yeah. the third string guy. He's actually got a burst and, and they, they used him when Jamal was out as, you know, a third down back to, to spell DeAndre Swift. So I could see him poaching some work. Jamal's just like, and we kind of had a back and forth, Kyle, on Twitter about him. He, he's just a very much downhill runner. Um, but right now with that Lions offense, you don't have to worry about Goff throwing deep. So there's going to be stacking the line. It's going to be a lot of collisions, that you know, big dust pile, and he comes out with three or four yards. The only thing that I like is he might be able to get five receptions. He might be able to get some dump off work. And, and you hope that they get to the one-yard line and they give him a dive. And that could and that could be a successful week for Jamal Williams, but um, yeah, it's it's slim pickets, man. I didn't really see anything that caught my eye. I think at this point, when it's either the week before the playoffs or even two weeks before, start looking at defenses. Kyle brought up a great one with the Eagles, which wasn't fantastic against the Giants. I'm still confident with them going against the Jets, and they see the Giants again. Um, so start looking for those defenses that give you an edge when you get to the playoffs, because you want to get them. If you're already past most of your bye weeks. Who are you holding on to anyway? Whether, keep your handcuffs, but for those guys, if you're holding on to shit nuts or any of those guys that let them go. Goodbye. I don't need you anymore. I don't injuries aren't going to change your situation. Get off my team and let me start stacking. You know, you want to start looking at who's actually going to get in my lineup. If I don't see you, if I don't have any confidence in you in a playoff game, why am I holding on to you? A defense, you have to play. So if, if there's a defense where you're like, you're going to be in my lineup, I have way more value on that guy than a waste, you know, a wide receiver running back that I'm never going to play. That's exactly it. We talked about the brain name brands earlier, like people you're familiar with. If you've got to take some random flyer so the other person in the playoff mix doesn't get them, this is a perfect time to store or stash or waive or claim or any of that stuff. Because if someone gets injured and they want for the backup and you've already got them, you're just playing strategy at that point. Uh, some of these names, like, I kind of think of this waiver wire in the playoffs coming up in the end of the regular season that if someone grabs a random name and they're willing enough and bold enough to put them in their lineup, you kind of just shrug your shoulders and you're like, okay, it's like poker at the end. I don't know if you guys play Texas Hold'em, but hey, that person needs one card to beat you on the river and they flip it over and that's the card and you're like, okay. You like, I, I've, I've had this happen to me. In 2017, I won uh, the 50-yard line my league back home with Deion Lewis as the highest point score for the Titans. Not the Patriots, but he played for the Titans. Wow. I lost a game in the playoffs. This guy, I'll never forget. His name was Sam Congano. He played for the Dolphins. Literally some random running back who's now a doctor, I believe, had the game of his life. Like, if I'm going to lose to that guy in the playoffs, okay. <laughs> if right. you were bold enough, uh, right. there was – I still remember this one in one of my leagues. Josh Cribbs. Remember him, the returner for the Browns? Yeah. Someone was bold enough to say the special teams for whoever they were playing was so bad. <laughs> they were bold enough to start Cribs and said he's going to run back a touchdown. He's going to score at least eight for me. Ran back the touchdown and won the game. That's yeah. like, 
Yeah. If you're bold enough to do something like that, Yikes. it's like, you know what? You deserve to beat me with that hand. Deserve to win that game. Well, I guess uh, he's probably way above 50%, but um, this might be Tony Pollard season. So if you've held on to him or if he's somehow available, he might not have the high projection when we hit waiver wire time because Zeke hasn't been ruled out yet. But there is that rumor floating around that the Cowboys might sit Zeke to fully heal up. I believe it's his ankle. Might be a knee. It was his ankle. Ankle. Um, if that's the case, Tony Pollard goes into that high RB2 conversation. And so if he's available, if he's on your team, do not let that guy go. Do not read all the way into the projections, which can be very deceiving. Like they don't rule them out until the injury reports come out. And so you kind of have to do your own research, check in with beat writers. If all indications are he's going to be out, Pollard's a great play. And he was a good play on Thanksgiving thanks to that big return. Yes, he was. And sometimes, especially the numbers too, 20 and 21, right? You're like, is that Zeke? Hey, is that? Yeah. Get out of the way. Is that Ze- no, no, it's Pollard. It's Ze- How many times were we doing it? Our messages too were like, oh, no, that's Pollard. Oh, no, that's the one yard vulture by Zeke at the end to throw fantasy owners and managers off and everything right. else. Am I crazy? Like, Pollard's better right now. And I know <laughs> Zeke is dealing with the injury, but it's been that way for almost the entire season. He's just faster and he's, He's elusive. I don't know. I'm a big. I'm a big fan of Tolly Pollard's game, and I think we, Zeke gets too much work because of the contract. We also uh, the first game of the year we said how good Zeke and Pollard look. Like Zeke looked yeah. like he had burst, and now Zeke now looks exactly like he did last year. Just slow coming off the ball, no burst. It's just I'm gonna run straight into an offensive lineman. That's what right. I feel like every time for him. Right. All right, so here we go. Starts and sits, sits, stars, whatever you want. Here's how we're doing this. If you follow us the entire season, we usually give you a few players. I want to do something a little bit different. For those of you fighting for a playoff spot, one player, whether it's a waiver claim because the bye week's coming off, a flex option, I want to get Kyle and Chet to give one player, obviously not the big names that we've talked about, the number ones in their position, but somebody you're going to make that Deion Lewis, Sam Khan, Gano, Josh Cribbs like move that helps you continue to move forward. Before we do that, though, we want to tell you about our friends over at Northeastern Insurance. We're going to talk about investing in a championship squad, a playoff team, and everything else. Make sure you're investing your money at Northeastern Insurance with our guy, Jared Lozier. Your business, your home, the things that are most important in your life, Northeastern Insurance wants to protect those for 2022 and beyond. You want to work with a guy like Jared. Jared's all across the country, it feels like, here the last months working with people building those relationships and building the trust. You want to work with somebody that you want to have in your corner throughout these big decisions in your life. You want to have Jared Lozier. By the way, Godzilla Media Christmas Party is coming up here the second Friday. Jared's going to be there, and I'm sure he might close the place down. He's that connected with Godzilla Media and all our guys across the board. Cannot wait to spend time with him, and those are the people you want. It's the most important things in your life. Contact him today. If you're looking to save money, you're looking to make those opportunities continue to grow in 2022, Email him, J-A-R-E-D-L at nemail.com or call him at 518-956-3753. 518-956-3753. You're getting his email, J-A-R-E-D-L at nemail.com. All right, I know I gave you guys a few minutes there to think, but of course, I jump ahead of the gun and go first. Jalen Waddle's <laughs> my answer. Jalen Waddle, okay? I like, it. I like it. 2019. The same spot, late November, early December. There's a certain person who emerged in the fantasy football playoffs. He is the phenomenal one, A.J. Brown, who's now lost his moniker to A.J. Dillon after the injuries that A.J. Brown's gone through this season. A rookie wide receiver playing the matchups for a team that's fighting for the postseason. Miami's become one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Miami continues to win. Is it because of Tua? Eh. Is it because of coaching? Probably. But Jalen Waddell had a monster first half last week. And if you're looking for somebody who's going to get a lot of touches and with a guy like Tua who might be competing for the future in Miami, if they decide to go after somebody like Deshaun Watson, he is going to constantly target Waddell. If you're somebody like me who's danced between Waddell and Melvin Gordon, which I'm going to stop doing now, Waddell's the guy. Jalen Waddell is this player for the next month that is going to emerge and maybe take you from a borderline playoff team to making a run, hopefully all the way to the championship. And it starts this week. Ooh, I love it. I love it. You want to go next chat? Is it because you don't have one? I have one. I just don't love it. <laughs> Actually, you know, I will go. Okay. Um, the guy that I've been looking at a lot and it's, it's very similar to guys. Uh, the Steelers are in desperate need to make a playoff push. Um, Big Ben has looked bad. 
and there's one guy that's been Mr. Reliable for him week in and week out, it feels. It's not Chase Claypool. It's Mr. Firemuth, or however you say his name. Yeah. So, I thought you were saying Dante Johnson. No, nah, no. Nah. You're, you're, you're holding that grudge? You yeah. had Firemuth like a month ago, Kyle, and he beat me in a matchup on that Monday night game with two touchdowns. Yeah, Firemuth over the last five games has not had – he last week he got injured. Obviously, he's in concussion protocol now. Um, but he hasn't had less than before last week seven tar- or six targets. Had four touchdowns in four games. Um, he looked good. I mean, he is the one that's always there for for Ben. Ben, I think we've all seen can't throw the ball. So if you're looking to make that push, I mean, he can't. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if you're looking, if you're looking to make that playoff push, um, and you and you are say you have two tight ends because you more than likely picked him up off waivers at some point. I don't hate starting him in a flex. You're probably going to get 10 to 15 points from him, and you're not going to be rolling the dice with people like we talked about, a Russell Gage, a shit nuts. Uh, you know, um, even Williams with CEH come back. Some people might start him in their flex. Firemuth is going to get the targets. He's going to get the he's going to get the red zone targets, especially. And you're he's going to get touchdowns. So I'm one who's riding. If I have Firemuth, I've actually started him in my flex because most of my if I have him, he's he's a second tight end. So it's similar to another league that I have, and it kind of goes with my sits with with Hawkinson and Knox. Like I, you you can start both of them; they're mm-hmm. both very viable options. So um, put Firemuth in your tight end spot, get those ten to fifteen points, and feel good that he might be able to save you in, from the flex spot. You have to be nicer to Deontay Johnson. I don't want to be. <laughs> he has no. been so consistent. I don't no, know. it's bullshit. B- bullshit. <laughs> Um, I think two weeks ago, it might've been last week, time flies. Um, I talked about the most difficult part of this final stretch for me was going to be figuring out the injured players coming back. Who's reliable. Who's actually healthy. We're not doctors. We're not there. Teams love to hold their cards close to their chest. And they, you know, you get the reports of questionable, still questionable game time decision. And you're like, Oh my God, like, I don't want to get stuck with a guy who's going to play one series and be like, I'm, I can't play. Mm-hmm. I've had that happen with two guys last week. One of them is Cordero Patterson. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt. I did the same mistake with another guy who I just didn't know what he was going to look like. My love of the week is Elijah Mitchell. Mm-hmm. He's good, man. He, I got worried about, and he has a, if I'm not mistaken, he has a pin in his finger. Yep. He's a ball carrier. That had me really worried about what's that going to look like. In his last game, he had 27 carries for 133 yards and a touchdown against the Vikings. He missed week 11 with that hand injury. And I think he also had, a, I believe, a, a chest injury. Week 10, 27 carries against the Rams for 91 yards. He has 27 carries per game in his last two games. Debo Samuel's out, and he's going up against the Seattle Seahawks, who gave up how many yards to Antonio Gibson last night? I think Elijah Mitchell, I I know he had 100-plus yards. He did, yeah. Uh, Seattle's 31st against running backs. Without Debo, who's turning into one of the best running backs in football, we saw that joke all over Twitter, uh, Eli's gonna get he's gonna eat, man. They're gonna they're gonna feed him. And so uh the pride of Erath, Louisiana, go Bobcats, go Elijah Mitchell. My one B, and this is even further of a stretch. I am comfortable playing Brandon Ayuk this week. Oh uh, here I am. He's Look back. By he's, God, he's back. It's Brandon God, Ayuk's music. Back. Look at his last three out of four games. 15, this is in half point PPR, 15.7, only four against the Rams. That's a good secondary. 18 against Jacksonville, 11 against Minnesota. It goes back to Debo Samuels out. That guy was the touchdown king all season for San Francisco. I expect everybody else to get a boost. I think Kittle's going to have a big week. I think Elijah Mitchell and Brandon Ayuk has the potential to have maybe his biggest game of the season. So do I feel great about it? No. But I think there is potential there. We've seen – he's on the field. He's getting targets. He's making some of the catches we saw as a rookie. I think Ayuk is – if if he wins you a matchup in the playoffs, you're going to piss somebody off just like Goss was complaining about Josh Cribbs 
and these other guys that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe he started Ayuk, but I think he's back. Get ready to get bold, excited. These are the days where you're going to have your computer, your phone rolling around wherever you live. Say, not a pass, go for a field goal on second down. These are the great times or the worst times when fantasy football is in its full swing. Next week, we're going to have the Gonzo the Media playoff prediction, and it's going to be a lot about the players and matchups, a little more pressure on Kyle Ray next week to call and the boldness of what's coming. Get ready. December, the playoff push and more. I'll talk to you guys next month, next week. See ya.